I'm doing a acorn harvesting experiment this year, um, trying to make some acorn flour. Um, so I spent the last week with my young children, uh, variously on walks and anytime we go outside, uh, picking up acorns and collecting them in this bucket. I've collected about five gallons worth and we've let them sit in the bucket for about a week uh, so that any weevils in the acorns can uh, burrow through the shell and will collect in the bottom of this bucket. And now I'm dumping them on this screen and sort of sifting them and allowing the weevils to fall to the ground. So as you see below, those little white guys are the weevils. Um, and you can see um, I'm also looking for any acorns that have holes in them. That's where the weevil came out. And so those nuts are obviously bad. Um, also, the ones with caps still attached are generally bad. Um, you can do a float test where you um, put these in a bucket of water, and all those that float um, have some sort of damage and can be discarded. Um, I've skipped that step, and we'll maybe do it later. Um, I'm going to try to uh, cure these to store them. So I'm, I'm going through, I'm picking out... Um, all the acorns with caps, any that I see with obvious holes in them, and uh, the little rocks that my three-year-old son collected, anything like that. I'm also looking for um, any that have the little radical coming out. These ones, the white oak acorns, uh, begin to germinate pretty much as soon as they fall to the ground. Um, they start to send down a root, and that root will sort of settle in through the fall, and then uh, in the spring, this will be ready to shoot up um, a sprout and grow leaves and all that. But it won't grow leaves until the spring, so that it doesn't get frost damage. So I was I was I was curious. I read that they germinated in the fall, but didn't know how do they harden off before it gets cold. But they just don't send up leaves until the fall. So any that are sprouting already, I know are white oak. I'm going to pot those up, um, protect them from squirrels and uh, let them grow out in pots for a year or two and I'll graft onto them. I've got some improved uh, white oak and bur oak varieties that make uh, bigger acorns and they'll produce uh, much quicker than a, a non-grafted tree. Um, so with these, these are mostly red oak and black oak. Uh, they have a higher uh, tannic acid content which makes them store a lot longer. Um, they don't germinate until the spring. Um, so these can be stored really well, but um, ideally they will be cured first or like dehydrated sort of to get the moisture out of the nut. Um, so I'm experimenting just with air drying them. I'm putting them on a rack, spreading them out so they've got good airflow, and then sliding them in here um, to this homemade dehydrator. Um, Someday I'm going to get this squirrel blower fan working and I'll be able to uh, more aggressively dehydrate. But for now I'm just going to see if they will passively, passively dehydrate in my barn here. So I'll check back in a few weeks, um, see if these are cured, and then we'll test out the new nutcracker. Thanks. We're here processing our acorns. Alright, and hazelnut too. So right now the kids are spectating, as they call it, separating out the ones with holes in them that had weevils and any rotten looking ones and putting the good ones in there. Um, this is a Dave built nutcracker and it uh, works very well. You use these washers to set it to the exact size you need. Is not kid friendly, however, um, and needs some serious muscle to crank it. Get it back in here. And it shoots the nuts out, um, cracks some of them real well, and that's sort of what the dried acorn looks like. I'll take it out of there. There's a nice healthy acorn. So what we'll do eventually is we'll separate all those nut meats out. 
from the, the shells and the bad meat. So right now we're just cranking though. Um, all right, I'll get to it. So we've dried our acorns on drying racks for about two months, um, allowing them to separate from the outer shell a little bit. And we've run them through the Dave built nutcracker. Um, and so now we need to separate the meats from the shells. So that's what these guys are doing now. We're taking the good nut meat putting it in here and the shells over there. Um, shell in the separating pile. Yep. And I'm sort of picky about the the acorns. I like the ones that are if there's any like mold or weevil damage, I throw them in a bad pile and just keep the good ones. But one thing you'll notice is this like papery um, skin over them. It, it goes all around and into little crevices. Um, and sometimes I just clean off a little bit with my hands and throw it in there. And you but can feel, sometimes peel it off. Sometimes you can peel it off. And it's fun. Mm -hmm. Yep. But once you grind it, later it's these fun. will get blended up in a blender and then um, soaked in water. And a lot of this little papery stuff will float to the top and get like decanted over the many and decantings get, that happen. some out whole like this one, no crack. Yeah, and those ones we take and we crack with the nutcracker. Um, so there's a few ways to... There we go. To crack these. Um, if you're just doing a small amount or you're just doing this one time, you can just use a regular nutcracker um, to crack all the nuts. Um, but if you're doing a lot, getting one of these fancy hand cranks is the way to go. Um, and even after hand cranking, um, there's some, the smaller ones uh, don't get cracked and fall through. So I just hand crack those, or I could collect them all and adjust the nutcracker and run them through again. Um, anyway, these are what the nice, the nice ones look like. And don't be grossed out if, if like, the whole inside is like dirt. Yep. And What's like, that? Where's that dirt little, come from? Like there's little worms crawling. There's little worms crawling around. Yep. You'll definitely get some gross ones. Like here's one with weevil damage. Um, yeah. Sometimes the whole inside, like she said, will be uh, worm poop essentially, and it'll look sort of like dirt. Yeah. It'll look like in that one. Yep. Um. It's so yeah, you'll definitely come across. Some gross ones. This, um, just throw them aside. Like, like this one. This one has been cracked a little, but like not totally cracked. So you have to do some work to open it up. That's right. So I've got all the shelled acorns here, and next step, I'm just gonna give them a little rinse, mix them around real good, so we get some of that excess fuzz off, and maybe some of this. Uh, papery covering. So I'll just r rinse it real good. Dump the top off there. And now I'll just take these over to my blender. I'm going to fill this up with nuts and water. So the goal with blending is just to get it into uh, tiniest pieces possible to create more surface area um, so that way it'll leach faster. Um, so I think like a Vitamix or something would do a better job. Um, this is what I've got. Um, it makes sort of big chunks but um, that's how we're gonna do it. So just blend it up. So I've got my acorn slurry here and now I'm just dumping it into a bowl with a cloth, like cheesecloth, or just a 
washcloth, anything to filter filter it out. Um, now, if this were like almonds or hazelnuts or anything, um, you could let this sit in water for a few hours and then strain it out. And uh, the liquid that strains through is like essentially almond milk or hazelnut milk. Um, but you don't want acorn milk because it will be gross. Um, so here I've got this. I just need to Essentially, I'm just going to compress this and squeeze out the liquid and get my dry nut meat. Um, and then I'm going to rinse it a few times just to get the nuts um, as clean as possible. So I've got my acorn meal here, nice and ground up. I've leached out that, or poured out that milky water. Now I'm going to use the hot water leaching method to get the tannins out. Um, for this one tail, uh, filling this with a good deal of water, um, bringing it to a simmer, and then every five or ten minutes dumping off the water as it darkens with tannins, adding fresh water, and repeating that process probably about 10 times, maybe more, until the acorns stop tasting bitter. Um, so I'm going to get to that step now. Um, this would be the process point at which I could also, I could put this in a jar, um, fill the jar with water and put it in the refrigerator um, to start the cold leaching method, which uh, is a great way to do it. It just takes a lot longer. So you leach it over a, a 10 day period instead of half an hour. So here we are doing the hot leaching. So as you can see the water turns quite brown. Um, I'm letting it go for about 10 minutes at a time and then I've got a second pot of water um, ready to go after I dump this out. Um, so I just keep cycling through keeping this this one filled back here so that I can dump this out and pour more hot water in and just continue to to cycle them. Um, like I said, it could be 10 to 15 changes of water. Um, the obvious drawback is that this uses a ton of energy um, and a bunch of water and it also cooks the starches and makes it so the flour doesn't hold together as well. Um, so using the cold leaching method, if you have the time, gets you a better product um, and uses less resources. But if you're trying to do it quickly, um, hot leaching is the way to go. So here's the cold leaching method here. Um, after grinding the nuts, I've just put them in this large jar and uh, pour water on top. Um, I put them in the refrigerator and every 12 hours or so, um, the more often the better, um, but I decant the liquid off the top um, and allow some of those little uh, papery bits that are wrapped around the outside of the acorn to, to dump off as well. Now I don't get all of them and that's fine. Um, they're not inedible, um, but I think they have a little bit of tannin in them too. So yeah, twice a day, um, decant the top, fill it up with water, give it a good shake, put it back in the fridge. Um, this can take anywhere from 10 days to two weeks, depending on the type of acorns. So with these red oaks that are, have a higher tannins content, um, I think it took me two weeks to fully leach these. 
Um, and the way to tell is one, the liquid gets a little bit more clear, um, but not completely. Like even this has been going for 10 days now and it's not completely clear. Um, so the, the real method is to taste them. Um, and particularly you wanna taste some of the, the biggest chunks. Um, just eat it and if it's really bitter, you gotta leach it longer. If it's no longer bitter, it's ready to go. Um, I learned that from watching a video by Oscar Brown because um, the liquid doesn't always turn clear when they're ready to go. That is an indicator, but it might be sooner. Um, so in this case, we're just ready to go with these now. Um, so here's a side-by-side -side of the hot leached and the cold leached. Um, cold leached on the right. You can see the liquid's gotten pretty clear, and at this point, they are good to eat. Um, one thing... I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick an immersion blender in here and blend it up very fine. Uh, now that I've done this a few times, I think I would do that step uh, before the leaching process to help speed up the leaching. Um, you want a really fine end product to use as the flour, um, so blending them up small in the beginning is probably beneficial. Um, so next I'm going to dump them in a cheesecloth and press all the liquid out. I do that a few times until it's running clear. And you might be wondering what this is, what this is. Well, this is acorns that were in warm water. But yeah. These are acorns that are in, that were in cold water. That's right. These are the same red oak acorns. This stuff was hot leached mm -hmm. in the boiling water, and this was cold leached. From this point, we experimented with a few different recipes, trying to get the right consistency for the cookies. Um, we found that this flour was a little wet still, even after pushing it through the, the cheesecloth. So when I put it into our mixing bowl, I'd take a handful and just squeeze all the water out first, and then dump it in. Even with that, um, it seemed like our first batches, the butter would sort of melt out of the cookies. So we ended up adding egg as a binder and that was really helpful. Um, but we made a few different things, some cookies, some pizza crust, um, all really, really tasty. And here's the finished product. We've got two different types of cookies. The lighter ones are like half acorn flour and half wheat flour. And the dark ones here, the ones shaped like little acorns, are about 80% acorn flour and a little bit of wheat flour. And they've all got butter and egg as a binder, um, brown sugar, chocolate chips, and a little bit of vanilla. So they're like sort of healthy, the brown ones at least. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. Um, yeah, acorn flour, healthy, Fairly versatile. Um, we made a pizza crust here and some other stuff. So good luck with your acorn adventures. Look at these carrots. Yeah. They're nice and big <laughs> and good. Even though we haven't tried them, I bet they're going to be great.